Welcome to this Easy 11 Plus short lesson on multiplying and dividing fractions. As always, the worksheet for today's lesson is linked in the video description, along with lots of other useful things, including some freebies. If you find this lesson useful, please remember to like, subscribe, and click the bell button. And don't forget that my Easy 11 Plus live lessons are every Tuesday evening at six o'clock in this channel. Let's get started. So this is asking us to find a half times three quarters. Remember that times in maths is the same as the word of. You're being asked to find a half of three quarters. And if you bear that in mind, it'll enable you to check that your answer makes sense. Now, when you multiply two fractions together, it's really, really simple. Multiply the top and multiply the bottom. One times three is three and two times four is eight. So a half times three quarters is three eighths. And it's worth being able to imagine fractions in your head so that you can check that your answers are in the right ballpark. So if we think of a circle, three quarters would be something like this. And a half of three quarters would be this area here. And if you imagine breaking this into eighths, this shaded area here takes up one, two, three eighths. So we can see that it makes sense to describe a half of three quarters as three eighths. You don't always need to draw a pi diagram like this, but it's worth having one in your mind as you work with fractions. What is four fifths of five ninths? So let's multiply the top and multiply the bottom. And of course, we need to simplify this because both of these numbers are divisible by five. And that's our answer. But there's something else that you could bear in mind here. Let's start again. When you're multiplying fractions, and only when you're multiplying, never when you're adding or subtracting or dividing, you can actually simplify in the first place by cancelling diagonally. So five and five can both be divided by five. Let's do that. Five divided by five is one, and five divided by five is one. So now we've got four over one times one over nine. Four times one is four, and one times nine is nine. So this gets us to the answer much more simply. This is a really useful shortcut, but remember that you can only use it when you're multiplying fractions together. Now we've got a very similar problem, but with mixed numbers. And if you try to multiply this while leaving the whole numbers and the fractions separate, you're going to end up with a real mess. What you have to do instead is turn each mixed number into an improper fraction. And an improper fraction is a fraction where the top number is larger than the bottom number. A fraction such as nine over four, for example, would be an improper fraction. And when you see a fraction like that, you know you're talking about a number that's larger than one. Whereas, for example, three over four, the top number is smaller. So this is a number that's smaller than one. One itself would be four over four. OK, so let's look at two and five sixths, first of all. Now, we want this all to be in sixths. So how many sixths are there in two? course there are 12 sixths in 2 because there are 6 sixths in 1 and we've got 2 ones so 2 6 sixths gives us 12 sixths so 2 and 5 sixths ugh. 2 and 5 sixths is the same as 17 over 6 now let's look at 1 and a third 1 is 3 thirds so 1 and a third is 4 thirds so now we've got two improper fractions, fractions where the top number is larger than the bottom number. We just need to multiply them together. Now, if you remember from the last question, you can cancel diagonally. 17 and three don't cancel. 17 is a prime number, which means that it has no factors apart from 17 and one. But six and four are both divisible by two. And now we've got a rather easier multiplication. 17 times 2 is 34, and 3 times 3 is 9. The only factors of 9 are 1, 3, and 9, and 34 doesn't divide by 3 or 9, so this is our answer in its simplest form. 
I would actually leave this as an improper fraction. You don't need to turn it back into a mixed number. If the question did ask you to turn this into a mixed number, you'd need to think, what's the largest multiple of 9 that's lower than 34? 34 over 9 is 27 divided by 9 plus 7 over 9 because 27 plus 7 is 34 and 27 is a multiple of 9. So you can give the answer either as 34 over 9 or 3 and 7 ninths. I would leave it as 34 over 9, that's an improper fraction in its simplest form and it's absolutely correct as an answer to this question. Now here we have a spectacularly easy question. So what's 10 times a half? Oh well, half of 10 is 5, of course, we just need to write the answer down, right? But why is this question here? What am I trying to show you? Let's think about this a little bit more. What we've actually done is 10 divided by 2. So 10 times a half, or half times 10, is 10 divided by 2. Now remember that just as 5 is 5 divided into 1 part, 2 can also be written as 2 over 1, 2 divided into 1 piece. So 10 times a half equals 10 divided by 2 over 1. Let's write that the other way around. Now, How is this useful? Well, if you get a fractions division question, you can turn it into a multiplication. All you need to do is turn the second number, the second fraction upside down, and perform a multiplication. And that will be the same thing as we've demonstrated here. What is 10 divided by a half? 10 divided by a half equals 10 times 2 over 1 equals 20 over 1, which equals 20. So dividing by a half doesn't look at all obvious. What does it mean to divide something by a half? But using this method, you can see that divided by a half actually means times by 2. We've taken the second fraction, we've flipped it over, and we've changed the division sign into a multiplication sign. Now let's try that method on a more exam-like pair of fractions. We've got 4 fifths divided by a half which is going to equal 4 fifths times, flip the second one over. Now remember, and this is really important, that you should not do one of these things. What have we done here? We flipped over the first fraction instead of the second fraction. That's wrong. Another thing you shouldn't do is flip them both over. Now let's actually find the answer. 4 times 2 is 8, and 5 times 1 is 5. So the answer is 8 fifths. And we can just leave this as an improper fraction, as I explained previously. What would have happened if we'd used one of the wrong methods? This one is upside down. That is most definitely incorrect. And this is just completely different. You can simplify it to 5 over 2, and that's also most definitely incorrect. Remember, you flip the second fraction over and change the divided sign to multiply. Don't do anything at all with the first fraction. A little bit of practice here. Now you might be tempted to take my method from earlier and do something like this. Ah, 7 and 7, they both divide by 7. 15 and 10, they both divide by 5. OK, so then we just need to flip the second one over. So we've got a half times 1 over 3 equals 1 over 6. No. Remember what I said earlier. You can only cancel diagonally when you are multiplying. And here we've got a very clear division sign in the middle which means that you cannot do this because it will give you a completely wrong answer. What should we actually be doing? Let's start again. We leave the first fraction the same 
we change the divide to a multiplication and we flip over the second fraction. 7 times 7 is 49 and 10 times 15 is of course 150. The only factors of 49 worth talking about here are 49 and 7. Neither of those is a factor of 150 so there's no further simplification that we can do here. This is our answer. And now we've got a division problem with mixed numbers and we know what to do with these by now. First of all we need to turn them into improper fractions. 4 is how many quarters? Well there were 4 quarters in 1 and we got 4 of them here so this is going to be 16 quarters. So 4 and 3 quarters is 19 over 4. How many thirds in 2? Well there were 3 thirds in 1 so there were 6 thirds in 2. Okay so now we've got our two improper fractions. We leave the first fraction alone, we change to multiply and we write 3 over 7. We check that nothing cancels vertically, so 19 and 4 have no common factors, likewise 3 and 7, or diagonally 4 and 3, nope, 7 and 19, nope, unfortunately, and so we just need to multiply these rather unpleasant numbers. 19 times 3 actually isn't too bad because 20 times 3 is 60, so 19 times 3 is just going to be 3 less than that. And 7 times 4 of course is and there we have it. No further cancelling that we can do here, so our answer is the rather unwieldy fraction 57 over 28. And it's worth doing something like double underlining or circling to indicate that this is the final answer, unless the exam paper has provided you with an answer space. I hope that's useful. It's pretty simple, but you just need to know what to do, and perhaps even more importantly, what not to do when you're multiplying and dividing fractions. Please remember to like this video, to subscribe to my channel, and to click the bell button if you can see it. And I hope to see you back next Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock for my next Easy 11 Plus live lesson. In the meantime, take a moment to explore the other videos on my channel, and to click through some of the links in the video description. You might find them useful. See you soon. Bye-bye.